I've got more stats. Okay, let's move to me. <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> Hi, I'm Steph. We know from public health studies that air pollution is linked to a number of diseases. My job is to understand how. Air pollution is a collective term for both gases and particulate matter. The latter is the most dangerous for human health. Particulate matter is also a collective term for all the solid particles that are suspended in the air. Some of the particles are things you can see, things like smog and most of the particles we're breathing in we can't see. Just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not necessarily doing a detrimental effect to our health. 92% of the global population is exposed to unacceptable air every day. A lot of things cause air pollution, fossil fuel burning, cars, planes, trains, burning of plastics, burning of anything, but also natural phenomena cause air pollution. One of the interesting ones is, is cruise ships apparently produce as much air pollution as a million cars, so you don't really think about it when you're going on a cruise, but apparently the air is not too good quality. During the London Marathon last year, when they stopped cars driving down some of the major streets in London, air pollution levels dropped 89%. So that's quite an extraordinary improvement. So if you could do that every day, it would be great. But economically and whether the society can run not having cars in central London is another question. So we define particular matter on size. We have PM10, which is 10 micron and smaller. We have PM2.5, which is 2.5 microns is smaller. It's going to enter mostly by breathing it in. The bigger particular matter is not going to cross the barrier from the lungs into the circulation, so it's going to just affect the cells of the lungs directly. The smaller particular matter will cross the barrier between the lungs and the circulation. We know that it's found in the brain, the heart and the kidney, and, and if it's getting into areas like that, it's pretty much getting into most areas in the body. They've also found it in umbilical cord um, blood, so in a female, it's crossing into the circulation and then getting into the placenta so it could end up in the fetus. Air pollution has been associated with many diseases now. Heart diseases, lung diseases, including lung cancer, increases in other types of cancer, increases in type 2 diabetes, increases in obesity. There's a study out of China showing that if you are exposed to higher levels of particulate matter in air, you have a higher chance of having a lower intelligence. We need to understand how air pollution is having a detrimental effect on our health so we can systematically target it. So the idea is to go and sample air samples from around the world, places that are well above World Health Organization limits that people are breathing in every day. We're then going to work out what happens to the heart, what happens to the lungs, what happens to the blood glucose levels and the way the kidneys work and what happens to the brain. Everyone wants to live comfortably. How do we make everyone live comfortably but also make sure that the environment that the rich and poor are living in is one, sustainable, but two, not detrimental to human health. No one wants to make changes because you think it will make, have a good effect. So if we can get this understanding of how air pollution causes detrimental health, we can make the right changes so that everyone can live healthy lives.